Welcome to The Wealth Transfer, where global economics and biblical principles and protecting and preserving your family's wealth is absolutely paramount to us. I'm Terry Saka, Chief Strategist, along with Dr. Charles Vance for the biblical wisdom and financial understanding. We are here for you, and we're going to go right at it. So, welcome, Charles. How you And doing? protection for your business. Yeah, I mentioned that a couple no weeks doubt. ago. I, this know, is important as well. The, I think the education for your business, no doubt sure. about it. And Absolutely. to store resources in silver for your business isn't bad as long as it's not money you need anytime sure. in the short Operating term. Operating money. Operating money, but definitely yeah. the profits. Absolutely. We have a lot of business accounts. Sure. Uh, and I love it because a lot of them are small business that had this is part of their profit. Absolutely. And so what they're doing is, and this is smart, folks they're taking their profits and buying the silver in a vault. Now, here's the interesting thing. It becomes an asset to the business. So instead of paying taxes on it, it becomes, because silver is an industrial product. So it becomes an actual, like a capital investment, a material investment on the business, yet it's sitting there in value. And you could deal with it later on how you, uh, sell it and deal with taxation, maybe it be a distribution. Uh, mm -hmm. I would sure let President Trump lower those taxes first though, right? So I would highly, highly consider the money that you have as profits in a business sit in silver in a vault. And don't be too scared by that, by the way. Cash is just as dangerous, stocks and bonds, more so because they're paper and they're fake. And this silver is definitely gonna have a reckoning and a much better price point. So. It's a great way to store value. Anytime you need it, you can always sell it, convert it to paper. Uh, but because you don't have to materialize it as a profit, you can avoid those taxes, keeping it as a capital asset to the business. So it's a pretty smart move. Terry, last uh, few weeks, we've been talking uh, about the bank money. You've got, you've got it up actually behind us, the end of the dollar. Yeah. Uh, and we've been talking about the banks, the banks of the world, the, the various things that are taking place negative interest rates, which is one of the craziest things that uh, I've heard or a, yeah. a, a consumer has heard. Yeah. We really want to talk about the banking system today. We've got some yeah. videos that we want to play, really explain to people how the banking system works. You know, Literally. actually too, um, the rules. Uh, we want to explain the rules. We've had some uh, big input on that. And a lot of us really don't know the actual laws when it comes to banking. The laws when it comes to your money, you think you're FDIC protected. You think the money in the bank is yours. Well, we have some wonderful videos today that to explain to you in perfect detail exactly the stuff we've been outlining for the last handful of weeks. I think if you take this the right way, you'll, you'll understand uh, the importance of being properly protected. So um, we could get going if we wanted to, at least on the intro video. We'll get that thing started. But sure. just to... I know he's going to boot that up for us, but I know we're talking about the end of the dollar, uh, but you know, we're not talking about the dollar being destroyed, annihilated, you see. What we're trying to say is the dollar as the premier reserve currency is compromised. And it's the end of the dollar as a dominant financial currency globally. I know what people are saying as financial experts, but we're, the evidence, the data says so. And it's all cyclical, it's historical. The dollar is getting ready to be marginalized and we're going to show some information that's very unsettling over the next few weeks that'll help you see that it's because we're near this period, reckoning period of our fiat experiment. I think they're gonna push for things we may not want and uh, let's hope we can avoid them and I'm talking possibly World War III. So. Uh, unsettling is a good word because we shouldn't be settled down into one place. We shouldn't get in a groove and just stay there if we're gonna be productive. Uh, we're not talking about scare tactics. We're not trying no. to scare anybody. No. We want people to understand what is actually taking place in the financial systems of the world because they don't want you to know what's going on. No, and you know, uh, I know, you know, people, if, if anyone that wants to try it, I've had a handful of people try to say that to me and you know, oh, you're just fearing and scaring this. You know what, you're just ignorant. I'm trying to tell you exactly the data that's out there. You could take or leave the data. When the data is screaming in so many categories in our Western financial system, it heeds the warning, watchman on the wall warning. 
You take or leave it if you want to. I'm not concerned about if it's this week, next month, six months, a year. It's close enough. We must understand as a kingdom because it's about preparation because I believe we in the kingdom, if we're in the right place, will be able to reap the rewards when this paper experiment collides. And I'm just merely saying it's colliding soon, real soon, whether we want to or not. It's not that we want this to happen. We're trying to war in the kingdom. It's coming. And it's not, I'm not saying it even next week or month. The data is already global recessionary. And wait till you see the others. Terry, here's how simple it is. The, the, the Federal Reserve banking system is an independent, we're going to get into this in some of the videos, mm -hmm. not run and operated by the government. What people, a lot of people don't know is this is the fourth national bank, quote unquote, yes. that uh, has been in America. Now, the problem with that is all of the other three banks up to this point have done exactly what you're saying is going to happen yes. to the Federal Reserve System. Right. If you look back over history, world history, Every time a, a banking system begins to operate like our system is operating, where there is there's nothing tangible to back yes. what is being used as currency, yes. it collapses. It collapses. That's just history. And it's and we're in this cycle, we're getting ready to see, I don't say the end of the dollar is a collapse and we're wiped out. I'm saying the end of the way we know business to be is getting ready to change. And because China, China has come on as an IMF reserve currency, don't underestimate that. That Chinese SDR uh, maneuver is huge. And so let's get into a little explain this. This is a little series or, or this whole program is going to give you some real vivid example of the laws of the banking system you may not know. So let's, let's boot up the introduction on this one and uh, take a look at this. You go shopping and your credit card transaction is denied despite the fact that you know you have money in your account. Or you go to an ATM machine and you're informed that your withdrawal request has been denied. Or you're a public official, such as a school business administrator, county treasurer, municipal finance manager, pension fund administrator, or anyone who has responsibility for protecting public taxpayer funds. You're informed that all accounts have been frozen until further notice. As you investigate why you can't access money you know should be available, you find out that the bank has failed and has been closed until further notice by the FDIC. You also discover that the government will be confiscating part of your deposits in order to stabilize the bank. You believe that this can't happen here because the FDIC protects your money. You may have placed your money into one of the big banks because it has large vaults and is protected by the government. You may have placed public monies into a large bank because they're collateralized and the government will back them. Therefore, you think these funds are safe. All of these assumptions are not based on the facts. Perhaps you recall that in Cyprus, depositors' money was confiscated in order to stabilize the banks. Similar plans are already in place to do the same in the U.S. and other countries. I know, I, you know, every time someone said this, Charles, uh, not in the U.S. Normalcy bias we have in America. We don't believe intelligent people. We don't believe that something can happen because we've never seen it, never been part of it. Uh, but I, right there, you just saw it is. It was Dodd Frank Law, 2011. Now, you know, Donald Trump has, uh, President Trump has said that he will be dealing with factors of the Dodd Frank Law. I just don't know what factors those will be. Uh, but the bottom line is the bail-ins are happening already. They happen in Cyprus. They happen in Greece. They're happening in Italy. We've outlined some of the cases in Italy where banks have shut the door and the people had their retirement savings reduced significantly because what they call it is a one-time tax. It's a one-time bail-in. This is how we're bailing out the banks going forward. And if you knew the balance sheets of the banks, and it's not globally, it's also here in the United States, if you knew the real balance sheets, you would realize how fake and off-counting booking they're doing. Alcoa, for instance, a company that does aluminum, they haven't made a profit in like six years. But every year you wouldn't know that because of the way they're maneuvering the numbers around in accounting methods with expenses and such. 
that make you think everything's okay, but nothing is okay. Most corporations are not nearly as endowed as you think they are. They've been selling their own or buying back their own stock. And so, you know, I think an education is really vital here. Uh, I think it's something you, you need to focus on. But when these companies are buying back their own stock, they're doing that in order to keep their prices looking like they're doing something. But the real numbers don't speak what the economists are trying to say is happening. So if you knew the rules and understood, you'd want to be protected. So take it heed of what's, uh, what's coming here uh, on this uh, break. Don't register now. Don't get on the computer now. Do it after the program, but register for information. Receive a package that will really enlighten you so you will have the ability to make a proper decision for you, your family, your ministry, and your business, and an education right here. Get started. Are you concerned about the security of your financial future? Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you prepare for the extraordinary times ahead by protecting and preserving your assets through silver and gold. At Cornerstone, the protection and preservation of your investment is our first goal. So we are here to serve you with honesty, transparency, and respect. Take control of your future by registering on our website at cornerstoneassetmetals.com or call us toll free at 888-747-3309. Call now, 888-747-3309. At Cornerstone, securing your future is our goal. Okay, so that's the beginning of it all. And now we want to get into, now folks that don't believe it can happen. It did happen in Cyprus. Now, many people are aware that this took place. <clears throat> Cyprus shut down for a few weeks. Now, a lot of people say it happened because, number one, the bank was in trouble. All the banks are in trouble in the, in the world right now because they, they're all insolvent for the most part. But it also was where the island of Cyprus was where the retired KGB uh, money, uh, big money people, kind of stashed their cash. Uh, so, but you know, if, if anything, just know this before the banks actually closed to take the little people's money, everybody big who had something on got their money out days ahead of time. They were warned. So, but the point is it was an old Soviet KGB uh, place there in Cyprus, but I don't know if there's any correlation there, but they did try that as an experiment and Cyprus had confiscations. All I know is folks, we're, we're going to get into the second video here, but you don't believe it's going to happen here. Be very cautious on that because it already did happen to the folks in the MF Global case. It already happened to those in the OA bailout uh, when the old retired folks had GM bonds. And when they did the bailout of General Motors, they got zero. So there's a lot here that we need to know. It's about protecting and preserving our future. If anything, be diversified because you're in the wrong place if you're in the system because the system cannot be trusted. Now, these videos, you know, they come, I believe they come from a compilation. Uh, we didn't produce them, but they come from a compilation of a nonprofit organization. So we're real thankful for them uh, for helping outline the, the visuals for people. So let's get into the second video here known as Cyprus. And remember, these are bank rules you don't understand, but are very real. To protect themselves, the Cyprus government closed the banks 12 days and people had limited access to their money. Long lines formed at the ATM machine. The fact is that the confiscations in Cyprus were not a one-time event. The eventuality for this had already been planned in advance and there are plans in place for confiscations of depositor accounts in New Zealand, the European Union, Canada, England, and the United States. And we passed Dodd-Frank legislation. And people think, well, that's it for bailouts. No, no, that's not it. Actually, it's just going to be a bail-in. In order to maintain liquidity in failed banks, the European Union and the Federal Reserve have a policy of bailing in, which means you seize depositors' deposits. Those could be mom and pop, up to their $250,000, it could be a city's deposits on deposit. It could be bondholders. That's what happened in Cyprus. That's what's happening right now with the Cooperative Bank in London, England. And that's what the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and the Bank of England have jointly agreed to do here in the United States. I know we don't believe it, 
but you're hearing it right out of the mouth of the Public Banking Institute. These people are are doing it. They're telling you this is real. I know because we have bank presidents. We have. You should hear the stuff they tell me. Uh, that you know, you don't even put your stuff in the bank secure deposit box. I know people think Charles, it's safe there. It's mm-hmm. not because it all can be turned off. So the point being, we don't believe it's going to happen. We have outlined for weeks now about the derivatives and what they mean. Most financial people, if you ask on Wall Street or Fiat World or financial advisors, will say, oh, there's no risk there because they all offset each other. There is just no risk. That's just not true. AIG was the entity in 2008 that was going to put to zero two to three million dollars of derivatives. Now, the movie The Big Short is a very true movie, outlines a lot of this. I really encourage you to watch that uh, because they didn't fix anything. They've actually made it a lot worse. But because AIG almost did that, the whole global system was going to unravel and implode. Today, those derivatives haven't gone away. It's worse and now we're 10 trillion in the hole. It is an astronomical bad situation. I'm really saying that what we experienced in 2008 is nothing compared to what's coming soon because all the data says so. So now the next uh, video I wanna get into, this video is going to explain graphically what we're referring to when it comes to derivatives. And if you think that the implosion of a derivative is going to somehow be okay, Watch this video and you'll understand a little bit more. The large global and Wall Street banks are the ones at most risk because they've been gambling with depositor money on risky derivative bets and other speculative investment devices, which means that when, not if, these bets start going bad, the banks will be on the hook for their deficient value. According to the Bank for International Settlements, which is essentially a central bank for the world's central banks, the notional value of these derivative contracts is an astounding $700 trillion. Think $700,000 billion. The entire world's GDP is only $70 trillion. There's not enough money on the planet to cover these bets. What most people don't understand is that once you give a bank your money, the money is legally no longer yours. Under the law, depositors are considered unsecured creditors to the bank and are treated as such under any bankruptcy proceeding. This type of loss happened with the collapse of MF Global. And while MF Global was a futures trading company and not a bank, the blueprint for confiscations was delivered here. The losses of customer funds were upheld by the legal system with the Sentinel case. Another important fact is this. These speculative derivatives have super priority status in a bankruptcy proceeding, which means that any derivative contract holder gets paid first before shareholders, creditors, and depositors like you. That is what I want to be known by everyone. <laughs> that was from heaven, wasn't it? <laughs> Terry, but, I, here's, here's what I, I want to let me, interject. Okay, let me do this. Go, Before go you interject, let me go say ahead. this. The part about that he just said there, derivative holders will get paid back first. We are last. If you think your money's your money, you just found out it's not. And that counts for your savings account in the bank, your brokerage firm, That gentleman that you saw in the court case was John Corzine, ex-Senator Democrat. Uh, And he was the one that bankrupted that MF Global and uh, made these rulings happen. And, oh, is he in jail? No. Should he have been? Yes. But you see the crony capitalist system we have, it's all about the banking system becoming wealthy as we, the people, become poor. And we have to know their reckoning day is coming. Job 27 will outline it. But I read Job 27, you'll see what I mean. It's coming. If we're in the right place, we're protected and preserved. But if you think you're getting paid back, if we have the implosion I believe is coming in the derivative world, and they're going to use war to blame it, something's not right, but it's coming, your money and getting the, your money back is limited. But if you have silver that's at home in a private vault. If you have silver in your IRA that's in a vault, it's not part of this system. 
No one goes out of business and takes it. It's 100% yours, and that is very, very important to know. All of these laws that they've mentioned on the videos mm -hmm. have already gone before judicial systems. Well, that it, was that case. Exactly. If that When that company went down, what happened is they went bust. Yep. And they, they had speculated with customer money. Mm. In the bond market of Europe, when Greeks, when the Greeks failed in Europe a few years ago, they did speculation in derivatives and bonds using customer money. Well, obviously, everyone's like, hey, that was my money. What are you doing? And it all went to court, of course. And they the court ruled. I have no idea why the judge would say that next to being in the system or part of the, the you know, you right. But what happened is they ruled that the money was not yours, that you have given the bank and the brokerage a loan. Mm. They were able to use your money and you thought it was segregated only in your name, but that court case actually determined, no, it belongs to the brokerage in the bank. If they lose it, tough on you because mm. you took the risk by giving them the loan. That's why this whole thing is beyond a racket and then they're trying to squeeze us and try to make it criminal if you have cash under your mattress. So just watch out. Je Thomas, it was Jefferson that said it the best. A criminal and government is one and the same. So let the chains of the Constitution bind the latter to keep it from becoming the former. And I know exactly what he's talking about because they're trying to make you think you need to trust a bank when the bank themselves, you got to watch out for. It. Here's the flip side of this. I grew up next door to a girl, which became a lady, that married an attorney that did exactly what you said these folks did. He took his uh, client's money and invested it without their permission and ended up losing some money. The guy ended up in jail. Yes. See, that's the flip side of this. Well, you know what's ironic? Madoff. We all know Madoff. Sure. Now, the Madoff case, they call this a Ponzi scheme. When, when you do something other than what you were supposed to do with the money, it's a Ponzi scheme. That's why these people go to jail. The reason the bank and brokerage people don't go to jail is because they, that was not your money. As Soon as you gave them the money for your retirement and savings and investing, it became theirs. It's called bylaws. It's called the read the fine print. Mm -hmm. And so Charles is correct. So These you people give, went to jail. You give them the right by just submitting the money. To yes. Them, you give them the right to do anything they want to do yes. with it. And there's yes. there's basically no, uh, they don't have have anything to lose right. because of it. Well, right. And, and the law is protecting them. And, and think about it. How many of you have actually read the term and condition of your bank accounts uh, when you opened it up? How of many, course, none how of many us. many people have read the terms and conditions and understand on a car it. loan? Well, right. Uh, you know, right? We've, we've been, we have been so conditioned by the financial yes. systems that the guy will go through, I buy a car every two years or a couple Boy, of years. Boy, they're slippery gets, This man. says, and this says, and you can read this if you want to, but it'll take you about two hours. I had the last guy. Yeah. I said, does anybody ever read these? He said, I've had maybe one person in five years read them. So they, we don't even know what's in those contracts, right. but they're legal contracts that we're signing yeah. and we're bound by them. And that's what's happening uh, with this system. Well, that's exactly right. So we think our money's safe by the FDIC insurance. Oh, oh, that's okay. I got FDIC insurance. I'm who, all right. Really? Who Let's owns that? Well, number one, <laughs> who, FDIC who insurance that? is not a federal <laughs> deposit insurance company. It is a private insurance entity that is there only for the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank. You're not safe. They're not insurance. They only have $25 billion in that fund. And these derivatives are trillions and hundreds of trillions. They cannot afford to bail it out. And here's the worst part. The bylaws of the FDIC say they have 99 years to pay you back. You're never seeing the money. So, but let's boot this up because this last video is going to give you that and a little bit more about what you think you have as protection. If you think that the FDIC will still come riding to the rescue, consider these facts. This chart will look at three figures. The FDIC insurance fund balance, the total deposits in U.S. banks, and the total derivatives exposure of the big banks. 
the FDIC has approximately $25 billion in its fund to cover losses. The total deposits in U.S. banks totals $9,283 billion. The U.S. bank's derivatives total is $297,514 billion. The FDIC could only cover 0.25% of all deposits and the FDIC could only cover 0.008% of the derivatives. Looking at the FDIC Bank of England joint paper summary, the text clearly says that in the U.S. they will use the powers granted under the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform Act and losses will be assigned to shareholders and unsecured creditors. Remember that as a depositor in a bank, under the law, you are an unsecured creditor. Moving further on down in this document, the text clearly says that the strategy for a failed global systemically important financial institution will be to assign losses to shareholders and unsecured creditors. Going further down the same document, you will see that the text clearly says that a resolution strategy for a failed, globally, systemically important financial institution will be to assign the losses to shareholders and unsecured creditors. Remember that you are now looking at an official government document and the plans for confiscation. I tell you folks, it's as real as it gets. It's happening right now. Get protected. Register for information when this program's over. Don't get caught waking up and going, I wish I did. God bless you. Tell somebody about the program. We're going to be back next week, same place and same time, right here for more of the Wealth Transfer News. We'll see you then. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you protect and preserve what you have worked hard to gain. For those of you who have IRAs to protect, 401ks to preserve, or cash in the bank, we would like to send you a package of information regarding the changes to the dollar and the challenges of our economy that you need to be prepared for. This package includes how easy it is to roll over your current IRA or 401k into a physical precious metals IRA for long-term protection of your hard-earned wealth. For those of you who have cash to invest, we can arrange to have your precious metals stored in a private vault or simply send it to your home. Call our toll-free number or register on our website now.